it's time to make some cool notifications. I did a video a long time ago about actionable notifications on the iPhone, but since it's been so long and my notifications stopped working for some mysterious reason, I thought it'd be a good time to do a short refresher on iOS notifications for Home Assistant. Sorry, Androiders. No love for you. To be fair, I did try Telegram and Pushbullet. They're both good, but neither let me open a video feed or have action buttons on the lock screen. They both have options for video and action buttons, but they require you to open the app. They don't just show up on the lock screen. And for completeness sake, I should mention that I couldn't test HTML5 since it's not available on iPhone. If you're an Android user, one of those three options is probably your best bet for notifications. Telegram, Pushbullet, or HTML5. So let's get down to business. First, to get notifications, you need to have the Home Assistant app installed on your phone. In the app, there's an important button you'll need to use. Hit the gear, then scroll down to Notification Settings. Then you'll see the Update Push Settings button. Anytime you make a change in Home Assistant to a notification that you've defined for iOS, you'll need to come back here and click that Update Push Settings button for the changes you've made to take effect. Also, make sure you keep your Home Assistant app up to date. Someday, there's going to be a very big update to the iOS app, and it'll add a lot of even better features. You won't want to miss it. Once you've got your app installed, let's go to Home Assistant and set up some cool iOS notifications. It's easy to just send a text notification to your phone, but we're going to go beyond just a text notification. We're going to include live video and action buttons that you can press to trigger stuff. To make these more cooler notifications, we're going to need three things. First, an iOS push entry in the configuration.yaml file for each set of buttons we want to see. Second, an automation that references our push entry and defines where the video will come from. And third, another automation for each action button that will determine what happens when we press that button. The iOS push entry looks like this. There are three main headings, iOS, then push, then categories. Under categories, you can have multiple entries. Each one will start with a unique name and an identifier. For now, if you want a push message to include a camera feed, you have to use camera as the identifier. You can get camera images other ways with a public URL and such, but for my purpose and for simplicity, I just want to use the Home Assistant camera entity. So for that, I need the identifier to be camera. After the main identifier line, you add actions. These will be your action buttons. That is, the buttons that will appear below the camera feed. Each button needs an identifier, and it needs to be unique and all capital letters. The title is the text that will appear on the button. If you put destructive true, it will make the text red. There are some other settings you can play with, and they're all listed on this site. One really, really cool option is to make one of the action buttons an input text button. So when you click that button, it gives you a box to type into. Whatever you type there can be used in Home Assistant for something like text-to-speech. With that, we're done with the first part of creating our coolest of cool notifications. Next, we build the automation that pulls in those buttons and a camera feed. For my purpose, I'm going to set the motion detector in my office as the trigger for this automation. I'm not using the motion detector in the camera because I want this to only work when I'm not home. I couldn't set Motion Eye to do that, at least not as easily as just setting this condition. This condition says if my device tracker shows me as anywhere but home, the automation can continue. If I'm home, it doesn't trigger. Now the action. The service is notify my iPhone. Under data, I give it a title and some text for the message. This is what will show up on the minimized banner on the lock screen. Then there's another data section where we define an attachment with content type JPEG. 
then push with category camera. That is super important. That is what links this automation back to our action buttons that we defined in the configuration.yaml file. Now because we used the magic word camera as our category, we get to specify an entity ID of a camera from Home Assistant. In fact, we have to specify a camera. If you don't put a valid camera entity ID here, you'll get an error. Don't ask me how I know. Now, you can use the camera category for other automations, but use a different camera feed. Here's an example. This automation has a different trigger, different title and message, and a different camera entity ID. When this one is triggered, we get the image from this new camera, but we get the same action buttons we defined under the camera identifier in the configuration.yaml file. This is the way it is right now. I don't know exactly what the future holds, but I'd bet it's safe to say that at some point we'll be able to define more than one camera identifier and be able to have different action buttons based on different camera views. I don't know when, and if I did, I couldn't tell you. The third part of building our actionable notifications is to make an automation for each of our action buttons. I went a little crazy and made five action buttons. Sorry, I just couldn't help myself. The first one is my destructive action. That just means the text shows up in red on the button. When we make these automations, the trigger uses the event platform and the event type is iOS notification action fired. Then under event data, we use action name. Notice the capital letter in the middle. That's not a typo, that's important. The action name references back to the identifier we listed under the actions in the configuration.yaml file. These need to be all capital letters. So now, when my action buttons pop up and I click the button that says trigger alarm, this automation will fire. And for the action for this button, I just tell it to trigger my alarm that I've already set up from another video. It does some fun stuff like plays sirens and flashes lights and drops snakes from the ceiling. For my next button, the police all button, I want to turn on the holiday LEDs on my house with the flashing police colors pattern. I also set a delay to keep them on for 30 minutes like that, then go off. I don't know if I'll ever really press this one. The third button will turn on the porch lights. That one will be more useful. The fourth one will turn on all the lights in my office and send a text-to-speech message to my Amazon Echo to warn the kids that I'm watching and to keep their hands off my treats. This final one is probably the best of all. This button brings up a box where I can input text, then that text will get sent as a text-to-speech message to my Amazon Echo. So I can customize what I want her to say based on what I see when I look at the camera feed. The key to this is the data template message. You can use it just like it is. You don't have to change this line at all. Just to find your own entity ID and your service would be Google Say or Notify Pycroft if you're not using Amazon Echo. One more really important thing I need to mention before we finish, and that's this. In order to see the live video feed on the lock screen, you need to be able to connect to Home Assistant from your phone. Until recently, that meant using a public URL, opening ports in your router, setting up some sort of encryption, or using a VPN. But as of Home Assistant 0.90, if you're using Nabu Casa, you can now get remote access to your instance of Home Assistant. And Nabu Casa takes care of all the encryption and gives you a public URL to use. To get the Home Assistant iPhone app to use your Nabu Casa URL, open the settings and where it says URL, paste in your Nabu Casa public URL. When you first set this up, you probably need to be inside your home network since you have to be logged in to the Home Assistant app for the new URL to actually be saved in the app. Once you've got your Nabu Casa as your main URL for the app, you can test your actionable notification automation 
and see if you get the video feed. If the video feed pops up, you did it. Congratulations. Now this Nabucasa remote access is great, but when you are in your home, you don't really need to use it. But thankfully, in the iOS app, you can also set up an internal URL so that when you're connected to a specific network, the app will go to that internal URL. That means you can set it so that when you're in your home network, it will just use the internal IP address of your Home Assistant instance. I set mine up so that I know if I'm connected to the remote URL or not. When I'm connected to the remote URL, I'm using the dark cyan theme. When I'm connected to my internal URL, that is when I'm home using my home network, I use the dark blue theme. That way I can very easily see how I'm connected to Home Assistant and only use the Nabucasa remote link when I really need to. Well, that's it. The coolest of the cool, actionable notifications with live video feed and remote access through Nabucasa for iPhone. In the past, I found myself a bit jealous from time to time of Android users who get new and better features sooner than us poor iPhone addicts. But not this time. This time, we got the cool stuff. <laughs> if you like what I'm doing and you want to see more, subscribe and hit the bell so you get a notification anytime I upload a new video or do a live stream. And if you didn't already know, I do live streams every Sunday and I try and squeeze one in at some point during the week, if I can. If you want to chat, we got Discord and Facebook. We've got a really great community of supportive, fun people who are trying to do projects just like you. And we get a lot more done and have a lot more fun when we help each other. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios.